So you've planned a Florida vacation with the goal of seeing a launch. The tickets are booked, you've got the hotels, but now what? The most common question that us Florida photographers get down here is where is the best place to view a launch? Well, the answer, it depends. I'm Sawyer Rosenstein with NSF, and let's take a look at how to see a rocket launch. And thanks to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Now, while I dabble in a dozen or so launches a year, the real heroes are our photography team that are constantly out at the Cape capturing all these launch videos and photos. So who better to learn the best spots from than our amazing Cape photography team? We'll hear from Max Evans, but we'll start with Julia Bergeron. Let's start in Titusville along US-1 at Kirk Point and Rotary Parks. It has a great view just 12 miles away from pads 39A, which launches Falcon Heavy, and Falcon 9, 39B, which launches Artemis, Launch Complex 40, which is the single busiest launch pad in the world launching Falcon 9, and Launch Complex 41, which belongs to ULA and currently launches Atlas and soon will launch Vulcan. Not only do you get a good view of the pads, but these locations are both open 24 hours and there are amenities nearby, such as restaurants and gas stations. These locations are both handicap accessible with sidewalks and boardwalk available. If you come at night, you'll even see a reflection on the water. You know I love the space shuttle Endeavor, but there's another vehicle that I love, Enterprise. And no, not just the space shuttle vehicle currently located in New York. I'm talking about the USS Enterprise from Star Trek. Now I can fly it and play as some of my favorite characters with the help of today's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Fleet Command is a free MMO that lets you customize your fleet and crew to dominate the galaxy. I love how much there is to explore in this open world. I mean, we're talking all the way from the Alpha to the Omega Quadrants. It includes iconic characters from the original series, TNG, J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more. And of course, the ships. Besides Enterprise, you can build the Romulan Warbird and the Klingon Bird of Prey. Join millions of players where you can either be friend or foe in your journey across the galaxy. And there's new content each month. This month, you get Fleet Commander Lutheran Sloan, Riker, Deanna, and a new feature called Wave Defense. You can play on desktop and mobile by scanning the QR code that you see on the screen right now. If you need to pause it, go right ahead. Otherwise, it's also in the link in the description below. Then for new players, you can link your Scopely account, head to the website, and on the promo codes page, enter Warp Speed for a free new player content pack. Just remember, you have to be a new player and do so before level 10. Thanks again to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Now let's live long and prosper back to our video. Another great option would be Playa Linda Beach, which is part of the Canaveral National Seashore. It's only $20 to enter and the pass is valid for a whole week, if or when a launch scrubs. However, if you see yourself coming back here to visit more often, an annual pass might be worth investing into. It is also worth mentioning, however, that Playa Linda is not always open. For viewing, launches have to take place with the normal operating hours, which can change based on the season. On top of that, while you're only three miles away from LC-39A in certain areas, that also means it's closed for certain launches, mainly NASA crewed missions. If you decide that this is where you want to go, we highly recommend checking online in advance to see if launch viewing is available. The good news though is, whether or not you get a launch, you still get a full beach day out of it. While sparse, it includes bathrooms, paved parking, vistas, and some boardwalks. And it's also wheelchair accessible. Next up on our list is the Max Brewer Bridge, located in Titusville. It's open 24 hours with paid parking lots and restrooms available. You can either opt to view low along the shoreline or get the full height advantage on top of the bridge. Just beware, as you can see from these pictures, it can get very crowded for Falcon Heavy and other high profile missions with some people camping overnight. So depending on the mission, you might want to leave yourself with some extra time before launch to get there. It's also worth noting that for larger missions, there may be police restricting where you can and can't park outside of the designated lots. For those who use assistive devices, it can be a bit of a hike to the very top, but the view is absolutely worth it. Moving farther south to Cars Park. This location is part of the Kennedy Space Center recreation areas 
but it is available to the public for launches. At only $5 per car, this location offers viewing from the pier and does have restrooms available. Portions of this location do involve grass and gravel, so it can be a little tricky for accessibility. This location is great for views of launch complexes 40, 41, and 37, which is currently being used for Delta IV Heavy. This is a great location to watch launches that are going on a south or southeasterly trajectory. For certain missions, this is also a great place to see Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage boosters perform a return to launch site landing. This is also known as an RTLS. I should also mention this is a great spot to hear the sonic booms that come with RTLS missions. One of the more popular viewing areas is Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, which is separate from Kennedy Space Center. You can watch launches included with your entry fee at no additional cost, as long as the launch occurs during normal operating hours. Fair warning, you won't see the rocket until it clears the pad. Additionally, bleacher seating may be available on a first come first serve basis at the Banana Creek viewing area located at Saturn V Center. This location offers unobstructed views of launch complexes 39A and 39B just three and a half miles away. Check out the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex website for additional viewing opportunities. While it may seem tempting to stop along the NASA Causeway on your way to the Visitor Center, it is important to note that this is not permissible. One of the more popular viewing areas south of the Cape is Jetty Park, located right in Port Canaveral. Open daily from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. It costs $15 per car to enter. And importantly, you cannot buy the day passes at the gate. They must be purchased online in advance. It has a direct view of Blue Origins pad, LC-36. But you can also see launches from other pads, including Newcomer, Relativity Space. And if the trajectory is southbound, with good weather, you should have a clear view the entire way, all the way down the coast. This site has a lot of amenities. Camping is available with full beach access, picnic areas, and a pier which can be used for either launch viewing or fishing. Also, when you're lucky, when Falcon 9 boosters return from a drone ship landing, they enter right through the mouth of the port, so you would have a front row seat. If you don't feel like going into the park, there's an area near the port called The Cove that offers additional options. Full of restaurants, there are plenty of places to eat while waiting for a launch or a booster return. But what about perhaps watching from a boat? I mean, we are in Florida after all. The ocean is right over there, and there is water everywhere. Fear not, for our friends at Starfleet Tours can happily oblige. Prices vary based on the mission, but they offer you on-the-water launch viewing and at times an even more unique perspective of RTLS landings. It must be said though that they are unfortunately not available for every single launch, so make sure to check all their social media and their websites to find out when they're sailing. So now you know where to view the launch, but what other tips and tricks do we have before you leave for your site? First and foremost, be flexible. This is rocket science after all, and it will launch when it launches. With that being said, it would be wise to anticipate delays or scrubs, sometimes of multiple days. So plan accordingly. Have a plan A or B in case one viewing location is busy or closed. Think of a backup plan, keeping in mind how much time is left until liftoff. Remember, the NASA Causeway and residential coastal areas are not publicly available. Notably, the 401 Space Force viewing area is no longer an option. And that is also important for our next point which is first, plan your arrival based on traffic. Second, based on the mission. For something along the lines of a Starlink launch, arriving to your site around 30 to 45 minutes before launch would be a safe bet. For any larger or more high profile missions like Falcon Heavy or any RTLS missions, plan to get there even earlier, sometimes even hours in advance as space may be limited. So if you're going to be waiting, don't forget your Florida essentials. This includes water, snacks, a chair to sit in, sunscreen if during the day, bug spray any time of day, and don't forget your NSF apparel, which you can get for yourself at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. And finally, make sure you tune in into the NSF live stream to hear the countdown to launch and check all of our social media platforms to check if there are any updates to a new launch time or scrub. We have engine startup and liftoff. And the most important tip is just to enjoy the countdown and the beautiful chaos of a rocket leaving Earth. And that launch, fans, is how to watch a rocket launch. So, what do you think? Did we miss any of your favorite spots? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below. 
And don't forget to check out Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in the description. I'm Max Evans. And I'm Julia Bergeron with NSF. Thanks for tuning in. And we will see you out there.